order of rivalries, whether it be the Tennessee rivalry, Auburn rivalry, the recent rivalry against Georgia, what's kind of the order that they were introduced to you? I'm going to be honest, uh, you know, growing up, because, you know, my dad played at Auburn, so it had to be the Iron Bowl yeah. first, and then it was uh, Tennessee, then I, you know, with uh, Georgia playing good these last couple of years. Yeah. And it, yeah. What's, what's uh, when you think of the Tennessee rivalry, like what, what comes to mind? Uh, just Peyton Manning, those are like, that's like the, and then the most recent, Jalen Hyatt. You know, I, I typically try to think of the ones that we didn't do as well. So then it, it you know, adds to the fuel. So yeah, that's what else. What stands out about their defense when you watch them? Uh, I mean, they, they're really good up front. I mean, and it complements their, their complementary defense. So they, they uh, work as one, like one part of the defense is good, the whole defense is good. So I will say that they, they're very complimentary. Are you noticing teams maybe scheming more against you and putting more attention to you on the field? Is that something that you're kind of noticing after your fast start? Uh, I mean, kind of, but you know, I haven't really just been looking into it, just focusing on our schemes and doing what I could do to best best of my ability for the team. Was what South Carolina did against you any different than what you've seen? Uh, yeah, it was a little different. They played like a. You know, they kind of funneled, but I mean, it, it worked out for the better for us because it opened up more for my other guys to shine. Being an instant kid growing up in Alabama, kind of what's the level of excitement or maybe pride in playing in one of these rivalry games this week? Uh, definitely, you know, it, it's very exciting just because you know what comes behind it. But I mean, we, we attack it just like any other week. It's just the fact that you get to go into another stadium and have some fun. You haven't really dealt with noise the way that you're going to face it next this weekend just what do you, what do you kind of are you excited about that or how, how do you plan on it definitely i'm definitely excited you know just uh we got the crowd noise that practice so it's preparing me a little bit uh and just really i, I don't think it really makes a difference when, when you're focusing on the ball so. you're halfway through your first regular season just kind of looking back on it is this gone maybe the way you expected or what are the surprises through this first half uh it's definitely been very good, you know. Uh, I've been enjoying the first half of the season so far, just with uh, my guys giving me the opportunity and the staff giving me the opportunity to be able to showcase my skills, uh, you know, for the better of the team. So yeah, it's been it's been real good. When you oh, think, okay. How big was it to see Jeremy step up when you know they gave you a little bit of extra attention to him, kind of have a big game? I mean, like I've always said, we we have the guys. I feel like anybody in our receiver room could do what I do or what he did this past weekend. So, I mean, it, it was no surprise to me. I was just, you know, happy for him that he did make those plays because he deserved it, no doubt. Obviously, you're early on, but I guess from your perspective, six games in, what does it take to be a successful Alabama wide receiver? Like, what kinds of attributes, what kind of mindset, things like that? Well, like you said, I am early on, but, uh, you know, just from the consistency that we uh, go about each day, you know, and focusing, honing in on the details. Coach Chef does a great job of uh, helping us focus in on the details, like route depth, uh, because it, it definitely makes a difference in game time. Uh, so, yeah. What kind of advice do you give guys that are, I mean, that are younger, or maybe not younger, but like in, in, in coming up, right? Like, like, I mean, that are about to be in your same position, same shoes, of being like, okay, this is how you set the tone. This is how you find success as quickly as I can. I would say focus on the main thing, keep the main thing. Uh, you know, that's always something that you hear preached all the time, but it, it is true. And, you know, just uh, try to put yourself around the best possible people because, you know, people that compliment what you want to do with your life. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely what I would say. Just focus on the little things. And if you if you have a dream, you better push for it and not let the exterior, uh, the exterior, what is it? The exterior. Yeah, yeah, I got you. The yeah, don't don't let the, the outside, outside noise. noise. Yeah, yeah outside, outside noise. noise. Yeah, I mean, do do you feel like the like I mean, your production as a freshman is kind of unheard of at this point? Do you think that can be replicated by like in the future, like in 2025, 2026? I mean, if if someone does, you know, what I do, you know, that that just means they have the uh, right head on their shoulders. They have a good base behind them, and you know, they didn't focus on the outside noise. So I, I mean, I, I definitely think it's possible, you know. So. Obviously, you weren't here last time Alabama went to Tennessee, but have the guys who were on that team brought up like that game at all? Uh, yeah, you know, we were in the locker room just talking about it, uh, and you know, they they don't want that feeling again. So you know, I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure they don't have that feeling again.
Um, do you have any memories just growing up watching the Tennessee Alabama robbery? And if so, can you t uh, elaborate on those? Uh, I think the what the most recent one would be when Jalen Hyatt, Hyatt had the game that he had, uh, and you know, it didn't go the way we wanted to. So that's just been stuck in the back of my mind to make sure. And um, uh, I know you heard, um, uh, you know, Jeremiah Smith at uh, Ohio State. He said uh, you and him are pretty much uh, the top receivers in the nation as freshmen. Uh, can you just talk about uh, what that uh, means and uh, what you are looking just to continue to show the nation and continue just uh, like what's your ceiling and uh, th stuff like that? Uh, I would say, I mean, I completely agree with him. You know, we, we came in and put our head down and, you know, I met him. Um, probably like last year and when we worked out I could just tell we were on the same way wave, wavely as far as what we wanted to do like at the collegiate level and so on for it so I definitely say we're the top two in the country and you know no disrespect to the other guys in the country but that's just the way I feel do you, do you follow like Jeremiah's like stat line and be like like try to do you do you, do you see if like if you're better one week you're like if he's better one week or like what does that look like <laughs> nah yeah. you know uh I mean, a lot of people do try to, you know, yeah, yeah. make that make it a competition, but I just take it as two guys grinding for their team and uh, doing the best possible to help uh, their teams win. So I have nothing but respect for him because he's a great player. So it ain't, it you said you met him like a, a year or two ago. Like, yeah. Do you have a relationship with him at all? Or? Yeah, yeah. We we talk we talk here and there. You know, yeah. it's it's all mutual respect. You yeah. know, it, it's a it's a solid relationship. Yeah. Yeah. What uh, did you have? I don't know. Like. What was Tennessee like to you in like the recruiting process? Like, were were you considering them? Like, did you go visit there? Like, were they on your radar? No, nah, I never visited, but they 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 were recruiting me hard, you know, over the phone. But I just I, I knew where I wanted to be, so.